Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ali. If you're new to my channel, and welcome to Beauty with the Purpose. So I'm here with another Jesus shot. I really like to sing, you guys. I love singing. And so what we're going to go over today, oh. allowing God to have control over your finances, trusting God with your finances. And no, I'm not talking about tithing. But how many of you thought I was going to tell you to tie it in this video? Comment down below. And so anyways, I think um, I really wanted to touch like on some scriptures uh, because when I, when I feel like people tell me like, oh, we're having finance problems. Oh, we're having money problems. And I have to take a step back even whenever I think like this and tell myself, are we really having money problems or am I having... A covetousness a covetousness problem and so I will get into that scripture so am I really having money problems or am I just looking at somebody else and I don't have what they have and it makes me feel like I could be in a much different position and so hey guys future editing Ali here um so there was actually a scripture that we went over on church this past Sunday um, and it happened after I sat down and did this study and filmed this video so I wanted to just share it with you guys um, it was something that the teacher went over it's going to be um, Colossians chapter 3 verses 1 and 2 if then you were raised with Christ seek those things which are above where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God set your mind on things above not on things of the earth and the reason he went over this is because he asked us a question and said most Christians are trying to build their kingdom on earth when God tells us that our kingdom is in heaven. And he also tells us where our treasure is, our heart also lies. And so if your treasure is on earth, then that's where your heart lies. But if, your treasure, if you're building up your kingdom and storing your treasure in heaven, then that's where your heart lies. And so you just got to be very cautious and remember that not everything is about earthly gain. We are to have wisdom and think of God and heavenly places. And now, and now back to regular programming you guys what we're gonna do is we're gonna start in luke chapter 12 verse 15 so luke 12 verse 15 says and he said to them take heed and beware of covetousness for one's life does not consist in the abundance of the things he possesses and he spoke a parable to them saying the ground of a certain rich man yielded plentifully and he thought within him saying what shall I do since I have no room to store my crops? I have, so he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build to, and build a, and build a greater. And there I will store all my crops and my goods. And I will say to my soul, soul, you have many goods laid up for many years. Take, take your ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, fool, this night your soul will be required of you. Then then whose will be then will those things be which you have provided so is he who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich toward god so first of all covetous covetousness the definition for this is having an unreasonable desire for wealth or possessions of others possessions so an unreasonable desire of having what somebody else or wanting what somebody else has so um to me this realistically is where people can often begin to feel that they're having money problems um when you begin to lust after what somebody else has or you're starting to compare your life to what somebody else is and not what you have and you can tend whenever you get in that place you can tend to forget of how rich you truly are especially when you're living for god that's why i love that this scripture is also telling us because i ended up reading to verse 21 and so the scripture is telling us like Look at this man, he has everything, but to God, he's still poor because he put all of his faith in his possessions and thinking that he was rich just because he had materialistic things. But if you go back to the end of verse 15, he tells us life does not consist in the abundance of things he possesses. And so what our life consists of has nothing to do with our treasure, if that makes sense, or money or anything like that. And so now I am gonna go ahead and go through quite a few chapters here. And so I am gonna start in 1 Timothy 6.10 and then we're gonna go back to the Old Testament. So starting in 1 Timothy 
Okay, so 1 Timothy 6.10 says, For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil, for which some have strayed from the faith in their, greedy, in their greediness and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. So this scripture is always misquoted because people say, oh, money is the root of all evil. No, the love of money is the root of all evil. And why is that? Because you can't serve two gods. You can't serve God and you can't serve money. If you're serving money, you start to give into sin. And what is sin? Evil. What is what does sin and evil lead to? Death. And so if you start to love money, I feel like you get into a place where you forget to love the things of God. And so there's that scripture. And then we're going to go to Hebrews 13, 5. Let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. For he himself said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? So right here, this is telling us, once again, don't want what other people have. And this is like my biggest thing because I feel like the only time, <sighs> now we'll say this, you don't know what God people are serving. And it's always the people who seem to have everything, fame, riches, money, just even YouTube fame. You don't know what God these people are serving. And the more you ask for that discernment, the more you don't even look up to those people. So try not to look at people like that because the devil will bless his children too to keep them exactly where he has them. So not only that, it says God will never leave us for, or forsake us. And I like that because if you think back to Matthew 6, 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, then he will supply all your riches and glory um, according to his good and perfect will. So if we seek God first and he will never leave us nor forsake us, nor forsake us, then that means that he will supply all of our needs. So there's no need to worry about finances. So let's go on to Hebrews. Oh, that was, <laughs> that was Hebrews 13, five. Next, we're gonna go ahead and go to Proverbs 13, 22. Proverbs 13 22 says a good man leaves an inheritance to his children but the wealth of a sinner is stored up for the righteous is stored up for the righteous and then we're going to go ahead and go to Ecclesiastes 5 at 10 Ecclesiastes Ecclesiastes 5 10 he who loves silver will not be satisfied with silver nor he who loves abundance with increase this also is vanity so I'm going to read again what God spoke to me. When we begin to love money, we forget about loving God and carrying out his will. And we can begin to fall into sin and start doing anything and everything we can to get money. This is telling us that God should be, that God should be and is when we allow him to be sufficient for us. So God is sufficient to us. He should be sufficient to us and he can be and will be sufficient to us when we allow him to be. The love of money tells us we have it we have it now so we have to spend it now allowing god to be sufficient for us tells us to be wise and make sure we leave an inheritance for our children and the generations after us and after them money will not satisfy us so that's what god spoke to me through all those different scriptures so you have to be very wise with money. You ever heard like the phrase like, oh, money burns a hole in this person's pocket. And that just means like as soon as they get five dollars, they got to spend that five dollars. Like there's no, no wisdom, no form of a uh, budget, no form of anything like that. And do Brian and I spend money? Yes, we do. But nine times out of ten, the reasons why we're broke are not for spending like spending money on material things nine times out of ten the reason why we're broke is paying our bills or you know paying some kind of fee to fix our credit or just paying something that we have to pay like car registration fees maybe one of us got a ticket just anything's like that like those are usually the reasons why we end up like with no extra spending money it's never because we are broke and have no budget um so usually whenever we do have the money to save like we, like a tire will go flat or something like that. And that's why you should have that wisdom. You should always, most people say, oh, you should always have a thousand dollars in the savings account. Well, a thousand dollars seems like a lot to somebody who may not have anything in their savings account. So what Brian and I did the very first year of our marriage is what we started to do and what we're gonna start doing again um, is we're gonna, uh, out of every paycheck 
for every hundred dollars that there is, you take $20 out of that hundred and you put it in your savings account. So for instance, a thousand dollars, that's 10 $100 bills. So you put $200 into your savings account and that really helps you. I'm not gonna sit here and tell you the only way you get rich is to invest. No, invest in your savings account and save that money for anything, for any just in case item. We've had so many just in case times with this car that we have that our savings really came in handy. And so with that being said, let's go ahead and move on to Luke chapter six. Okay, so Luke six, verse 31. And just as you want men to do to you, you do to them likewise. Wait, what? Oh, Luke 6, 38. I was like, what? <laughs> Sorry, Luke 6, 38. Give and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over will be put into your bosom for with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. And then we can go on to Philippians 4, 19. And my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Okay, so what most, I'm going to read again. What most pastors won't tell you is that your giving should not be a tithe, but it should be an offering. And it does, and it does not have to be to the church, but to anyone you know who has a need. So when we're obedient to God and give how and to whom he says to give to, he wants to bless us and take care of us, and he will. A lot of, I really don't want to get into that, but you're not going to be blessed because you tithe. You will not receive increase because you tithe. Now, if you're obedient to God, not man, to God, and he's telling you, you know what, I want you to give the church $200. Okay, give the church $200, but then the next paycheck he says, I want you to give Miss Lopez $200. Well, then you go give Miss Lopez $200. Um, your next check, this family needs $100 in groceries. Go buy them $100 worth of groceries. You go and buy them $100 worth of groceries. That is an offering to God because you are being obedient and you're not holding on to that money like it's all you got, but you're trusting God whenever he tells you to give you, maybe it's your last $200, but he's telling you to give it. And you're going to trust him with that and say, you're telling me to give this because this person needs it more than me. I'm going to be obedient to what you're telling me to God, to do God. That's where your blessings come from. That's where your increase comes from. Your faithfulness and your obedience is what brings your blessings and your increase. Not because you tithe to a church, not because you offer to a church, but because you listen to God and you give where he tells you to give, how much he tells you to give. And that requires obedience. Your obedience is what brings you blessings. I always get worked up on that. So to sum it all up, be obedient and give to where God tells you to give. And he will never not tell you to give. You just have to listen to where he wants you to give. Okay, so Romans 13, 8. Okay, now with that being said, um, Romans 13, 8. Oh, no one anything except to love one another. For he who loves another it has fulfilled the law. When we start to begin like... When we get in a place where we feel like we don't have as much as somebody else's has or we're having money problems, we always want to give in to getting loans. And right here, the Bible tells us, oh, no one, nothing. Brian and I have took out one loan since we've been married and we've paid it back. And needless to say, really, whenever you get a loan, you're going to end up paying more money than what they give you. So it's just not smart. And then you're back at square one. So you have to be really careful with loans and just not even get them at all because the word tells you not to owe anyone anything. Um, this means loans. Also, I just want to encourage you guys, do a budget. I feel like Brian and I have gotten so much better and our budget has gotten so much more tight um, that now whenever the time comes and we want to buy a house, like we'll be able to buy a house. We'll be able to know... We, we now know like how much we can afford in a mortgage payment. We now know like a whole bunch of different things. And that just becomes from having a budget, being wise with your money, understanding that just because you have money now, don't mean you have to spend it now. Yes, a lot of people are like, well, you can't take it to your grave. No, you can't take money to your grave, but you can leave an inheritance 
to your children after you and then you teach your children to live in inheritance to the generation after them and so on and so forth so that's what the bible is telling us to do is pretty much don't love money love god and then he teaches you to be wise with money and then like i said your blessings and your increase don't come from tithing to a man or uh, and, and they'll love to tell you oh you're giving back to god but what if God isn't telling you to tithe to that church? God is telling you to go give to somebody else. So just be obedient to God first. Yes, honor people. I, I agree with honor, but you also have to honor God first. And so um, honoring God may, be, may not line up with what a man is telling you to do. And you just have to be okay with that. And you have to trust God with that. And so just know um give because god tells you to give doesn't mean it has to be to a church building give to where god is telling you to give and just know that through your obedience through in that god will increase you and bless you and so also know that his word tells you that he wants to give you the desires of your heart he wants to increase you he wants to be sufficient for you he wants to supply all of your needs we just have to be obedient to him and so I hope that this helped out, helped you guys out. I love you guys. Always remember that Jesus loves you more. If you haven't already, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Also, please hit that subscribe button and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye. Mwah. You're funny.